on. Hi. And <laughs> hi, friends. Welcome to Tabletop Tonight. My name is Ruel, and this is Lauren. Where's Lauren? Oh, there Hello. she is. And there's a pug coming up. Um, we're a little slow tonight. We got a late start, but I want to thank everyone for joining us. Got this new setup I'm trying, and it's I don't know if it's distracting me or what, but um, got a, a secondary screen here. Um, we got the camera there, got the camera here. Um, and uh, yeah, so thanks again for uh, joining us. Uh, Amanda Panda is our moderator. Uh, she's the Amanda Raider, so please make sure you keep things PG-13 in the chat. Um, so see all the uh, regulars there. Um, our other host, Michelle, is um, taking the night off. Uh, she's had a really busy uh, week at work, so hopefully, I mean, she's still working actually right now, so shout out to Michelle for all the hard work she's doing and all the teachers out there. See Marlon there. Hey, Marlon, how's it going? Uh, Panda Angels mentioned Char Charity Board Gamer. Um, got Download Done Yet. Um, hope you're feeling better, down yet, uh, Download Done Yet. Um, hope you recover soon. Uh, Daygill's here. Hello, Daygill. And we got all the friends in here. This is great. Um, we've got two games tonight. This is Double Feature Friday. We've got Control, um, C CTRL. Is that, is that how you would say it? Control? Yeah, I would say Control. It reminds me of the, the key on the, the keyboard, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then we've all, um, we're going to play that. Now, Lauren is actually going to take off um, after Control because she's got um, her thing going on. She's got a meeting she's got to go to, and she don't want to keep her uh, make her late. So we're going to play Control first, and then we're going to play some Ripple Rush. I'm just going to solo it. Y'all can follow along. This is a uh, new roll and write from Stronghold. It says it's 15 minutes, one to five players. I mean, I just took off the shrink wrap, and we're going to learn it together, friends. So um, stick around for that. Um, as always, want to see what you're uh, got the stream snacks going. Um, hey, Bruno, what's going on? Do you have any stream snacks today? He had, he had dinner already, so <laughs> he, he's good to go, I think. Uh, <laughs> I see uh, Jarnheim, thanks for joining us. And... Alex is here. It's actually pronounced control. 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 Th thanks for uh, <laughs> clarifying that, um, Alex. Uh, Amanda Pam has got watermelon juice. Mm. We had uh, Lauren made hot pot tonight. That was really good, Lauren. Thank you. Yeah, super easy. Yeah, it's delicious. And even though it's like 100 degrees out, hot pot still hit the spot, I thought. It kind of balanced out with the aguas frescas we had earlier. Oh, yeah. We had aguas frescas and pupusas. Oh, so good. But um, yeah, this is a great, a great question, uh, Charity Board Gamer. Is it Simon or is it Simon or is it Kaman or Kaman? I'm still going to call it Cool Mini or not. So <laughs> uh, spicy or not spicy hot pot? It was not spicy tonight. <laughs> the other night, ooh, I'm still sweating from the other night. Yeah. And um, Alex says Bruno is a snack. Rawr, <laughs> rawr. That was perfect. <laughs> he's a he's a snack dog, Bruno. Um, yeah, friends, let's uh, get to it, shall we? Um, oh, Daigle says tomorrow. I want hot pot. Tomorrow, hot pot restaurant here. Here we can go. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, nice. where are you, Daigle? Yeah, are you in uh, the U.S. or we're in Southern California? And I see restaurants open, but um, they, you know, they have the tables outside and distance far enough. So uh, we're open for business, but there are definitely restrictions going on, which is good. And people are wearing their masks uh, when they're at the restaurants. Um, Let's start with uh, CTRL, control, or whatever. want to thank our, oh, Daigle's in Taiwan. Okay, oh, nice. Right yeah. on. Uh, what do you think about that as a fun Halloween stream? Um, Halloween stream. Sorry, I missed it. Oh, here it is. You guys played Horrified? Yes, Horrified. Actually, Michelle and I played Horrified on New Year's Eve uh, with our friends uh, Daryl and Abby. Um, shout out to them for watching. We had a great time with it. It's um, for those of you that don't know, it's based on the old school Universal monsters, which I love. You know, creature from the um, Black Lagoon, the old Frankenstein monster, just like the old um, uh, movies from Universal. So we really enjoyed it. We had a good time. Uh, that might be. I think it'd be fun. Do a little Halloween stream. Get some like scary games or zombie games. zombie dice. Yeah. Course. Oh yeah. <laughs> To get Robert here and play yeah. zombie dice with us. One of my friends from the Choo Choo crew, the first time he played zombie dice, it was like three consecutive turns that he rolled exactly what he needed. Yeah. And insane. Like obliterated the rest of us. It was insane. The greatest rolls I've ever seen. Uh, Charity Board Gamer says, uh, let's have Ruel and the Good Tama costume for Halloween. I'll pass on that. But thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe I get a yellow shirt, right? Um, let's start with uh, CTRL control, shall we? I'm gonna set this up so y'all can see this. Um, let me see. Do I hit this one? No, application window. That's what I want to do. Uh, movie recording. Boom, boom, boom. And there it is, folks. CTRL control. Um, oh, download done yet. Let's make a. That's a great. Make a raid costume. Nice. Uh, like a Viking gamer person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alex says, I love the U.S. Uh, everything is okay. There are literally helicopters over my house scooping water over the. Wow. Oh. You're, yeah. Wow. In cra crazy, crazy times. Uh, James is here. Hey, James, thanks for joining us. Let me put our faces here so y'all can see. Oops. Wrong one. There it is. Nope. That's not it. Oh, there. Uh, let's talk about sponsors, shall we? We want to uh, thank, as always, our sponsors, Van Ryder Games, for um, sponsoring our channel. Thank you, Van Ryder Games. Uh, folks, please uh, visit VanRyderGames.com to check out all their great uh, titles. And we'd also like to thank our other sponsor, Holly2Art.com. Uh, Holly is responsible for all the art and emotes uh, in our channel. Thank you, Holly, for that. Please visit Holly2Art.com. That's two with a C-H-I-U. So thank you, sponsors. Much appreciated. And since I'm over here, why don't I put our cool little Twitch overlay, All compliments right. of Holly Chu. Uh, let's put this here. We are playing Control, CTRL, and Ripple Rush, followed by um, this. So thank you again for our sponsors. Uh, and be sure to check out those emotes, folks. The, the pandas, uh, angels got them out there. There's uh, us, all of us, and uh, Bruno as well. Okay, CTRL. This is a... Like a 3D puzzle type game, uh, sort of. Actually, it's like area control if you think. If I think about it, uh, there are sides of this cube. So this is actually. Whoops, I did it uh, backwards here. These are the starting cubes, uh, one of each color, and it, we're playing a two-player variant. So there's going to be a little different uh, thing going on here. But I'll go over the basic rules. Uh, what you're doing is you're going to. We each have 22 blocks, I think, or 21 blocks. Um, actually, I think it's 22. And we're going to place them on various spots here on your turn. You will have a flag, and I'll put those out in just a second. Um, on your turn, you remove your flag, and then you place three cubes in a row, in a straight line. And if you notice here, I went, you know, I did a little um, flipped over here. And then at the end of your turn, you could place your flag anywhere. What the flag does is um, signify your opponent or yourself cannot go there. So if Lauren was blue, she could not cross over that. She would be blocked, okay? So what you're doing is putting all your blocks on there. Then at the end of the game, we're going to look at each side, including the top, and whatever you can see of your color, you're going to score a point. So in this uh, example, I have one, two, three, four <laughs> um, yellow. So yellow would score four. Um, what's going on? Alex <laughs> says, I wonder if it so, uh, looks like those blocks we used to learn to count in kindergarten. <laughs> I wonder if they taste the same, too. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of tasting, I think Bruno Bruno might have had a taste of one earlier. But, um, so that's the game. It's uh, like an area majority game, basically. You just score on each side. We do not place anything on the bottom. Okay, there's that. That's empty. So it's always going to have to be sitting on the table. But uh, obviously, me and Lauren are going to be passing it back and forth. But the two-player variant, what we do is instead of playing one color, we're playing two colors. So I'm playing yellow and blue tonight. Uh, so I will alternate. On my first turn, I'll take yellow, place that. My second turn, place blue. But after that, uh, I mean, we continue place so alternate turns. Me and Lauren, different colors. She'll be pink and green tonight. And at the end of the game, we're going to reveal which uh, color we're scoring. So we each have these cards. We're going to secretly pick one that we're scoring place it face down. So we're basically using the second color as a decoy against our opponent. And at the end of the game, after all, all the cubes are gone, are placed on the thing, we reveal and show you what we are going to score. Okay. Uh, Daryl B. Gaming here. Thanks for uh, hanging out. Um, and Twin Flower is here too. Oh, Twin Flower is here. Yay, Twin Flower. Always happy to see Twin Flower. And Distant Babble. Hello, Distant Babble. Um, Dan, what have you done to the time to stop me from playing a game with you? Yeah, Daryl, what's up with that? Uh, <laughs> Halftime over, peace out. Oh, okay, cool. See you, Alex. Uh, go green. Okay. So first we have to place our flags on here, Lauren. So put those here. Again, these are blockers. And then go, do you have your two cards, Lauren? Yes. Okay. So Lauren and I are going to choose one color each. 
Um, I will pick this color. And then we just discard the other one. Is this your discarded? Yeah. Okay. So mine's going to go here. Let me make sure I know which one I'm scoring. Anyway, double check too. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go first. Thank you again for joining us, folks. This is Tabletop Tonight. We do this three times a week here on Twitch. We play a different board game. Um, usually it's me, Lauren, and Michelle. But Michelle's been super busy at work. So it's just me and Lauren tonight. And then Lauren's taking off to her work thing. It'll be all by myself at, uh, after this game. So... Uh, here we go. For first turn, I'm gonna also do. Let's see. I'm gonna alternate. I'll go yellow, blue, yellow, blue. So I'm gonna start with yellow. On my turn, I remove my yellow flag, and then I must place one, two, and three pieces. I must go in a straight line, and then I must place a flag somewhere. So I'm gonna place it here. Okay. So if you notice, I did that because. If Lauren is green, she cannot go over here. It's blocked. She could go one, two, but she could not leap over. Or she can't even go to the second one. She just go one, and she has to stop, so she cannot do that. So I'll pass this over to Lauren. Okay. Um, my first color is going to be pink. Uh, Amanda has a great question. Does the third yellow have to touch the other yellows? Uh, yes. In this case, I'll just, let me just yeah, show yeah. here. So this one, it, we start, it has to start with an adjacent color. So one, two, if you ever get to the edge of a wall, it just rotates over. So it's base, It's in the rules of the game, it is touching. Great question. Okay, so remove pink flag and we'll do one, two, three. Daryl says, uh, I saw something about cry havoc. I know I see Cry Havoc in chat. I know it's Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw TI Fortune. Nice. Oh, uh, man. Okay. Bruno got some gray snot on Oh, me. Lauren, are you putting it here? You, huh? you cannot put it here because it's um, blocked by that flag. Oh, oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah. So this flag actually blocks that flag. Um, maybe I will. Put it here instead. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. So Lauren has uh, moved her uh, place pink there. Uh, oops. Yellow flag came off. And then so I'm going to take the blue players or my blue one now. Um, so I'm going to go. So I take off this. I'm going to go like this. One. Oh no, I can't. So I can't go there. I can only go up. Wow. Okay. No, you could go the other way, couldn't you? You could stack on top of. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Why don't we do that just to show um, everyone at home? One, two, and then here's what Lauren was referring to: three. I can stack on top of my op opponent, which is great because now at the end of the game, if we scored now, the her color is hidden, and mine would score if I'd chosen blue. Uh, so I'm going to put this flag this way. Oops. Okay. And then Lauren's turn for green. Yeah. Any chance there's scratch paper or tissue over there? Yeah. Scratch paper? Sure. I just want to get this Bruno snot off of my <laughs> finger. Bruno snot. Um, okay. It's not actually a snot. They're just eye boogers, in case you were wondering. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> <laughs> uh, friends, thank you again for joining us uh, tonight. Let us know what you're playing this tonight or this weekend. And um, I see Grant here. Thanks for joining us, Grant. Uh, if y'all didn't uh, see it last night, or actually today, uh, Beampleville released a video. Um, I talked to Tim, uh, Crystal Paisano, um, uh, Chris Yee, and uh, Julie Medina, all different content creators. We talked about board games and had a really great time. And Meepleville, uh, they're doing a lot of cool content now. It's great. I mean, you know, I wish that their business, I mean, I hope their business does well, especially during these times, but I love the fact that they've um, started to get into content creation a little bit more. Like Tim has interviewed Reiner Knizia. He's interviewed, um, gosh, uh, Rado and all kinds of great people. So please check out Meepleville, folks. Um, yeah, Grant, I wish we would have hung out too. You know, we should we should probably do a live stream together, brother. Um, Lauren is gone. Wow. So this is what the board looks like now. I'm going to move this over here. And it is yellow, my yellow turn. So I'm going to take off the flag. And again, you cannot go to the bottom, but I could go this way. I'm going to go uh, yellow, 
yellow and yellow here. Okay, and then I have to place a flag, so I'm going to place the flag here. Okay, that's what it looks like right now. Oops, a little crooked. Daryl of One Arts here. Thank you, Daryl. Good to see you. Um, Grant says he played uh, this with Tron and crushed me at this. I have a feeling, I don't know, I, I'm still getting my mind wrapped, wrapped around it. Oh, we played earlier to practice and I wasn't really seeing things, so we'll, we'll see. Games of Fire is here. No problem being late. You're always on time here. We will be uh, hanging out for a while. Um, as a reminder, tomorrow, 8 a.m. Pacific, I'll be hanging out with Big Potato Games as part of their UK Games Expo um, uh, live stream. So please uh, visit us. We're going to play a fun party game called Herd Mentality. We're going to have a, a good time with that one. Okay, Lauren. Oh, this yellow one's going to fall okay. out. So you got your yellow one, or the yellow one's here. So it's a uh, blue's turn. I'm going to move this here so I can do this. Uh, so I take blue's flag off, and then with blue. So I'm going to loop back around this way. So one, going this way, two, three. And I'm going to put this. Oh, I can't. Darn it. Darn it. Okay. Let's do the blue this way then. Okay, so I'll put that. Hopefully, block Lauren on her next move. Whoops. Uh, what's your next color? Uh, green. Green. Okay. Is that? Um, so that was one for the Darnet counter. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> um, Games Fire. I had to finish watching the new pair of Harry Parking. Oh, yeah. Cool. And Download Dunya asked, do you still do Rolling with Ruel? Yes. And actually, um, probably tomorrow, right? At, I think after about an hour after. Uh, the UK Games Expo thing I'm doing. I think I'm going to do a rolling with Ruel here, just solo. I've got a couple of solo games I want to go over, and um, oh. yeah. And actually, one of them I'm going to do an unboxing. Hey, Sasquatch Grandma is here. Hi, Sasquatch. <laughs> it's Sasquatch Grandma again. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. So now I did. Uh, I did blue, so now I'm back to yellow. So I need to take off the yellow one here. I'm going to go. So it could be any yellow. Why don't I do? do, 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 do. I'm going to go this way. One, two, three. And then my flag. Your pink is next, correct, Lauren? Yes. Okay, I'm going to just in case she wants to go here. Oh, no, I can't. <sighs> Maybe this one will block. Okay. There you go. Why did I do that? Okay. Um... <laughs> just in Babel, plus Alt, plus Delete to start over. Nice. Nice reference. Yeah, that Harry Potter work replacement game looks fun. Um, we just opened that up. We're going to hopefully play it in the next week or two. Is that right? One, two, three, yeah. And then you moved your flag, right? Oh, I didn't. Okay. Um... The name of the Harry Potter game was um, House Cup Competition. Like Harry Potter House Cup Competition. Uh, so now it's my the blue turn. So I take this off. And I'll take this blues here. Now let's go. Uh, one, two, three. I'll put this blue guy, the flag here. All right, so back to Lauren. Yeah, Harry, Harry Potter House Cup competition. Thank you. Oh, I just got um, Tidal Blades in, and that's it's a straight from the production floor, like uh, James um, Hudson. Thank you, James, for sending it out. Straight from the factory here. Got a copy. I'm going to unbox it either tomorrow or Sunday. Probably tomorrow, I think, afterwards, after we do the um, UK stuff. So after the UK Games Expo, please come back to my channel and uh, check out Tidal Blades uh, unboxing. I'm, I've got a couple other games I'm going to unbox. Uh, Sonora, 
uh, Forgotten Waters, um, City Skyline, and Friday the 13th. Okay. So now uh, you moved your flag, right? Yes. Okay. I've got yellow coming up. So yellow, yellow. Um, one, two. Darn. Can't do it there. Oh, I can take this off first. Okay. So I'm going to go one, two, and then cover one of Lauren's pink ones for three. And I put the flag, let's do the flag this way. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm working with pink. Oh, yeah, it's Forgotten Waters. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, that game after Amanda was, uh, you and Amanda were talking about Twin Fire. Um, Panda, are you uh, unboxing you during your Rolling with Ruel uh, during Twitch? Yes. And it's either going to be tomorrow or Sunday. Uh, honestly, it's it's a 50 50 shot right now. I got to see how things line up, especially after the UK Games Expo. Um, but I'm thinking tomorrow, um, probably like 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. If y'all are hardcore enough or awake, I don't know what time zone you're in, but if you're 8 a.m. Pacific tomorrow, if you're around, please uh, join me on uh, Big Potatoes, uh, Big Potato Games uh, Twitch stream. I think it's Twitch. I don't know if it's Twitch or YouTube, but Big Potato Games will be playing the Herd Mentality with um, actual LOL, um, Suzanne Sheldon, and uh, some of the Big Potato folks. Okay, so I've got blue coming up. Oops. Just knock out the pink. So I take out the blue. This flag doesn't want to stay there. There it is. And I'm going to go one. And then so that jumps over to here. Two, right? Yeah. Doom, doom. Or wouldn't it go here? I thought it would, but it's actually because we have to stay like, you know, on top of each piece. We can't, like, it's not like you don't do stuff on the side because it's like you're going in parallel with oh. the battlefield so one two and three i was totally i i missed that earlier it's my bad okay so i'm gonna do this here whoops oops legos are falling apart don't step on them <laughs> <laughs> okay so that's my turn i've moved my flag okay lauren okay so that was that was yellow, right? Just no, that was blue. I just did so. Yellow's up. I put them in like little stacks of three because you're doing it three turns. So I'm, for me, it's an easy way to remember um, which turn I'm at. So I'm doing this one next. GB Glazer, thanks for joining us. Good to see you. We're playing CTRL or Control, as we like to call it, and. Um, yeah, it's a race to control every angle, the box says. Basically a puzzle game with some um, area majority. Uh, Legos are definitely dangerous on the floor. Yes, that is like the worst pain ever. Okay. Okay. You step, have you ever stepped on a Lego, Lauren? Probably. <laughs> I just tried to put that memory deep, deep into my mind <laughs> so I never have to think about it. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go, so this yellow's here, so I'm gonna loop over here. One, two, and three. And then I'm going to put a flag going this way. No, this way. Yeah, no, this way, go. Ah. Okay, back to Lauren. Okay. Blue one next. Just want to say a shout out again to our friends at Pandasaurus for the copy of Control. Um, Pandasaurus Games, folks. <laughs> GB Laser, yeah. How's everyone's weekend starting off? We made it. Another week. <laughs> I mean, time has no meaning these days, right? <laughs> So this one doesn't go here. Correct. It goes, it goes on. It'll cover it. Yep. So nice. does this one still score a point this way? Yeah. Oh, so. Unless there's a flag there. The flag can block it. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, 
So yeah, uh, at the end of the game, we'll have flags as well. And those flags, they, obsc they obscure the view of uh, certain cubes, so you won't score those as well. I'm having a hard time with this pink flag. Hopefully it doesn't fall out. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here we are now. It's blue's move. So I take out the blue flag. And then I'm going to go uh, oh, no. one, two. Okay. So I'm going to do one here. Then continuing mark here. That's two. Oh, no. It's two here. One, two, and then three on top here. And then I'm going to put my blue flag um, going this way. Okay. And then back to Lauren. The yellow one's next. Oh, Grant, has it fixed a broken warp for the last two? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I haven't played that one yet. Kairn? Kairn? GP laser, yeah. AC, we, we had our AC on the Fritz two weeks ago, but thankfully everything's fixed now. <laughs> on um, the Fritz. Yeah, on the Fritz. Uh, actually, I mean, right when the heat wave started, it's like, oh, our air conditioning conked out, but it was like the, the early part of the heat wave, so it was only 90 Fahrenheit, but at least we had it fixed before it hit the triple digits. So we have four turns left? Yep. So I've got yellow. Okay, I'm going to start yellow. Um, so adjacent to yellow. One, two, three. And then my yellow flag. Oops. Yeah, that pink one's a little loose. Yeah, I can't get it to stay. Yeah, it's a little loose. Okay, I'm going to do the yellow. Back to Lauren. Okay. <laughs> James, this spatial puzzle uh, just makes my brain makes my brain hurt just watching. Yeah, it, it's if you're not into spatial puzzles, this might not be for you. I know, like your mom hasn't played it yet, but I know she's gonna like this one. This is definitely Michelle's type of game, and I like it. Um, I'm just trying to literally wrap my head around it. Right now. <laughs> uh, thanks for asking, uh, GB Laser. She's hanging in there. She's got a super busy week. So far, so good with Michelle. Um, she's just, you know like all teachers making that transition to, you know, really, you know, getting to connect with the students online, making sure they're, they're all good. But yeah, she's been uh, she's putting on some long hours the last couple of days. And how's everyone else doing out there? How are you all doing with work? Uh, I know we got some teachers in the Please. stream. Let us know. Hopefully, hopefully you're getting by and hanging in there. All right, so Lauren's uh, pink is going. I'm going to get blue going next. Uh, so blue flag comes off. So I'm going to go one, two. Okay, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to pop onto here. That's one. So that means one, and then two, and then three. And then I'm going to put the flag going this way. Okay. It's blue. So Lauren's got three turns. I got two turns. Um, oh, that's very nicely. Uh, thank you. Um, make sure she knows how much we all appreciate the dedicated work teachers. Work teachers across the globe are putting in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And there she is right there. Her work day has not ended yet. So yeah, she's that's like 12 hours, folks. If you're if you're keeping score at home, that's a 12 hour day for you. But yes. Um, <laughs> it actually looks sort of cool. It looks like this crazy yeah space age um, building or something. Uh, so, folks, uh, we're almost done. Just stick around. I'm going to be playing a roll and write called a Ripple Rush. And um, oh, okay. So there's that. Now I've got what was it the blue? No, it was yellow's turn. Right? Yeah. So uh, yellow, take this off. And then I'm going to go to the yellows. Ah. So I can go here. One, two, three. 
One, two, no. Uh, one, no, that doesn't. Okay, I'll go this way. One, two, three. Put the yellow flag here. Okay, back to Lauren. Okay. Down done yet? Let's play another round of Empires of the North while watching the stream. Oh, nice. Yeah, Empires of the North. I know my buddy Daryl. Uh, not Daryl with the 1R, but um, Daryl B. Gaming. He's a big fan of Empires of the North. He's the one that taught it to me. Great game. Games of Fire, first week of their second year of college went well for my girls. Nice. After some tech issues, the class had things smoothed out. Good to hear. Um, Twin Flowers rocking the Bruno email. It's always nice to see that. <laughs> Uh, download done yet? You got me hooked. LOL. Yeah, TV laser. That that is a truth right there. Off to a decent start. It's tough going through. I can't even any anyone going to school. Can't even imagine. Bruno fan, thank you, Games of Fire, for redeeming Bruno points. Um, Bruno was here at the start of the stream, but he's decided to take off. And hey, Hornus is here. Thank you, Hornus, for hanging out. Always good to see you. Uh, we are playing CTRL Control. We're almost done with it, and then I'm going to play Rapid or what is it called? Ripple Rush. After this, I don't know where the fuck this. Uh oh. Um. Yeah. yeah. Putting the flags is important because at the end of the game, those flags are going to obscure uh, certain blocks, and they will prevent them from scoring. Download done yet? Great question. What's your favorite tile lane game? That was a good one. I'm going to have to think about that. Folks in chat, what is your favorite tile lane game as I try to uh, figure out which one's mine? Hmm. Let's see. So blues. I'm going to go blue here, blue here, and blue here. Oops, here. And then I have a blue flag. How can I do this? Blue right here. So I am done, and Lauren has one more set of blocks to place. Oops. Harness nice uh, lanterns. That's with or without the expansion. I agree. That's one of my favorites. I, I really enjoy lanterns as well. Um, I do like the expansion, but uh, yeah, the base game's perfectly fine. Uh, Donald Dunya, hey, only one Carcassonne. Carcassonne is a classic. I, I really, that's another one I've had a long time in my collection. I don't play it as much as I used to, um, but I, I don't know. I can't. I haven't gotten rid of it. I still enjoy it. Um, but what I'm trying to get is this Carcassonne South Seas expansion, I, uh, a standalone expansion. That one I, I really like because it has a little, sort of like this almost economic thing going on with fruits and stuff. Really cool. Okay, so Lauren is almost done here. Um, then we're going to reveal which ones we're scoring as well. Okay. Okay. All done, Lauren? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what it looks like, folks. There Oops. is our control or whatever ctrl so now we're going to look and so i've got our little scoreboard here and then so lauren i'm going to reveal which ones we're scoring i'm scoring blue and i'm scoring green and lauren's scoring green okay so let's start with the top down view um, i'm going to score all the blue ones so i'm going to stand up here i can see this blue here one two three four five six that's it okay and then greens Oh man, I can see a lot of green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I don't think this one counts because it's a flag. Okay, so that was our top down view. Now we're going to rotate it. Um, we'll start with this green one this way. So now we look here. My blues are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. It's eight for blues. And Lauren, your greens, um, I see. So again, the green is blocking. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'm going to rotate to the left or to the right. So blues here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then greens, I see one, two, three, four, five. Is that it? Five. Oh, no, six. My thumb was covering up. Okay, let's continue rotating. It's tied. Uh, wow. Okay, so that, see this flag here, folks? That's blocking mine, so I didn't score it. So one, that doesn't count. Two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. And then the green, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's a big one. Ten for Lauren. Then we rotate again. Oops. What was that? Is that like this? I don't know. Oh, no, folks. I totally, something just fell out. I think that we were done with that side, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah, so, we just did this. Okay. So this is the last side? Or uh, second to last? Second to last, right? Oh, maybe we did need that. Yeah. One. Oh, yeah. Did we score this one side already, folks? I don't remember. Well, I don't think we did. We think we did this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. Well, you know what? I think. No, so that was the same one as before. So I'm going to say, okay. So I think this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This should have been eleven, not ten. So now we're doing the finals because there should be five total scores. Here we go. Okay. Oh, this does not look good for me, folks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those are blocked. Seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh my gosh. So I think we know who won, but I'm gonna do the math um real quick. Fourteen plus fourteen is twenty-eight, thirty-six. Uh fifteen plus uh six is twenty-one. Plus uh, 11 is 32, plus 14 is um, uh, 5. <laughs> <laughs> 46 to 36. Lauren has won. Right. Well done, Lauren. Good game. That's control, folks. Lauren has won. Um, that's a, it's a cool little puzzle. It's definitely, I thought it's stinkier than I thought it would be. Yeah. Like, I don't know, is the flags uh, sort of throw me off for whatever reason. Not throw me off, but it's something that I, I need to consider more. As yeah, we're playing, right? yeah. Like, I feel like you could win, like, you could be super strategic about it. Mm -hmm. um, but when it starts to make your brain hurt, <laughs> yeah. you can just place things and yeah. see how it turns out. Yeah, I, I really, I, I think it's cool. It's really, it's clever. Um, yeah. Again, it's, yeah. yeah. I don't know, I, I'd like to try it with more players because I don't know about this whole, like, picking a color thing. I'd like to just see how it would play, like, if I just had to um, worry about one color. I don't know. It's a yeah. cool little variant, though. But, uh, yeah, good game, Lauren. So if you play three players, does that mean one color just, like, It's just down? gone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The two player, uh, three and four player, uh, it's just everyone takes a color. The two player is um, you choose a two and choose one secretly to score, which I think it, it works because you're not. I honestly thought you were trying to score pink. Oh, really? Yeah. That's why I was covering a bunch of pink, but. Towards the end, I was like, oh, wait, there's a bunch of green open, and it was by then it was too late. I felt like um, early on, my a lot of my greens were getting covered, so yeah. that's when I was like, oh, wait, like I need to focus. You're right, right. Okay, cool. So that's Control, folks, from Panasaurus Games. Uh, Lauren, thank you for hanging out. I know you've got a meeting right now, so yeah, yeah good luck. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So Lauren will be, be back uh, next week, folks, and bye. Okay, see you all next week. All right. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah. All right, folks. So now you're stuck with me uh, from this point on, folks. I want to thank you for hanging out. Um, we're going to play some Ripple Rush, okay? So let me clear this out. I'm just going to move this to the side here. What's everyone else? Uh, what are y'all playing tonight? Anything else uh, going on? Let me know what's happening. And thanks for hanging out. Um, as always, much appreciated. Let's go. Let's erase this. Um, erase any remnants of a loss for me. <laughs> uh, it, it's a it's a clever game. I, I liked it. And I know Michelle will like this one because she's uh, into the like she really enjoys spatial puzzles. So this one I feel like it's right up her alley. So um, oh, land, air, and sea. That game I really want to play. Really want to play that one. It's the Ruel and Bruno show after hours. Yeah, it sure is. Thank you. Um, Nice, Marlon just finished uh, Tale to Walk In and Cartographers. Very nice. Did you end up getting the um, digital version, Marlon? Let's see. So this is brand new, folks. I'm literally opening it now. I just took off the shrink wrap earlier. Um, I did check out the rules. So yes, uh, DJ Super Best Friend, erase the evidence of loss. That's that's my motto in life, right? <laughs> so here are this. 
Oh, good. I'm glad you liked it, Marlon. Yeah, we're uh, Marlon and I were talking earlier. He's asking about cartographers. And I loved it. Um, I think it's it's a lot more strategic than it appears. Um, it's not just like um, you know nothing wrong with a easy rolling right. Like this, I feel like this will be pretty straightforward. But cartographer is really really cool. Um, just that map that you're drawing, and um, you know, Marlon. Actually, when we play. Michelle busts out different colored pencils, so her her map looks pretty cool at the end. I mean, it looks like Tetris when she's done. Um, she does different colors for all the different monsters and stuff, I mean, like purple for goblins or, or the ambush or whatever. Um, let's see. Marlon, you're still streaming. I haven't seen you stream in a while. Maybe I, I don't know if I've just missed it or what, but uh, Marlon TGD, the game dude, he uh, streams as well on his Twitch channel. Uh, let me get the scoring there. Get these cards out, and so tell you what, I'll leave this here, so we know what we're playing. Ripple Rush. And I'll leave this out of the way. Don't need that anymore. Uh, Marlon, nine wild score. Yeah, totally, I totally get you. Oh, Isle of Sky. That's another great Isle of Sky. That one. I don't know why it flew under my radar for so long, but I finally got to play it just last year. At one of our big gaming events, it was probably for uh, Gen Can, and boy, that game is good, really good. I, I want to shout out to uh, Monique and Naveen of Before You Play. They taught me that, and oh, it was so good. Like the whole auction, the way that auction. I think it's an auction style game that they have. It's so good. Um, thank you, Amanda, for shouting out Marlin. Let's see, so cartographer James loves cartographer. Yes, so good. Um, let me see. We got the number cards. So, are these shuffles? These are so I'm gonna give them a couple of shuffles. These are the number cards, right? So, it's like a flip and fill, basically. We're gonna be going here. Let me get this camera there. And it's a flip and fill. Uh, for one player, we are going to be using 20 cards at random. Okay, uh, eight gold cards. Okay, so let's just jump right into the advanced game, shall we? It says, if you want to play the advanced game, shuffle the gold cards, reveal two of them face up. So these are the gold cards. Two, four, six, seven, eight. Give these a quick shuffle. And let's see what we pull out. The other two go into the box. So we have this goal here for three points. And this goal here for another three points. Toss those in the box. Want to thank uh, Stronghold Games for the copy of Ripple Rush. Much appreciated to our friends there. <laughs> Marlon. <laughs> Straight in advance, like I said, hey, Marlon, that's that's how we roll, right? Um, Marlon's one of my regular gaming buddies, uh, pre-COVID, obviously, and um, that's, how, that's how we do it. Marlon, that's, that's how we roll. Um, Jimmy Glazer, uh, no dumb questions here, folks. So what do emotes do? I assume they're just for fun. Yeah, just for fun. Um, I'm going to leave it to... Amanda um, to explain because she's more of the Twitch expert than I am, and also Marlon's an expert as well. Uh, just for funsies, right? There, there it is. Grant's got a couple there. You got the Bruno emote, um, got the Ruel emote. Amanda has her own as well now. Uh, thanks for our friend Holly Chu from hollychuart.com. Okay, I've shuffled these up enough. So I am going to play with 20 cards. So let's do, there are 100 uh, cards in here. Just take 20 at random. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and the rest go in the box. It's there, and just because we'll give it a couple more shuffles here. Uh, GB Glazer, oh cool, there you go, uh, GB. Thank you. There it is. Got the Ruel emote. I think that's the Amanda emote, and the Bruno emote. Always good. All right. So, um, Ripple Rush. We play through these 20 cards, and you're going to draw a card and write your number on one of these uh, columns here, right? It's 5, 10, 15, and 20. Those are the only ones there. But then these, the Xs, you can put any number you want there. Um, what you're trying to do is score the most points, and the way you score points at the end of the game, um, for each column... Players score one point for each number in the longest chain of numbers. So as long as there's a chain, 
um, you're going to score points. They don't have to be consecutive. You can skip. You can have gaps. But you do have to have these in um, descending order, right? So let me, let me look at the rule sheet here. If you look here, like 25, 17, 15, 14, 10, 9, 22, 19, 18, and so forth. So they are going descending here, okay? And there has to be no empty spaces, so you're going to get the points for that. Um, and then for the advanced game, which we're playing, if I complete this row here, or are those the same rows? Wow, I think they are. I think we ran out. How, why is that? Oh, no, it's the one. Okay. So if I complete these two rows across, uh, I'll get three points each. Okay. And then let me see if there's any other scoring. Uh, play till the deck is empty. One point each for each number in the longest chain of numbers. And then... Um, and then you score points, gain uh, three points if you complete one of the rows on most cards, complete six points if you do both. For the solo game, it's one of those, uh, I know some people don't like it, but it's the old, you know, beat your own high score type game. So you know, I'm just going to score this, and since it's my first time, I'm probably going to score pretty low. So, of course, I'll have a score to beat next time. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much the game, folks. Uh, flip and fill. Uh, you draw a card, write your number, then discard the card. Um, so we're going to jump right into it. Um, so thanks again for joining us. This is Tabletop Tonight. Let's start, shall we? Uh, where my, I thought I had a pencil here. Maybe I'll put it back in the box. Or maybe I fell. Um, there it is. Right back in the box. And of course, like any other roll and write, I'm sure I will be asking Michelle if I can borrow her laminator to laminate sheets. There it is. Yes, uh, Grant, you got me. Um, Ruel's rules for winning. Aim low and do better next time. <laughs> uh, thank you, Donald Dunya, for the uh, reminder to hydrate. Always appreciate it. Um, do you find that by never setting expectations? I'm rarely disappointed. Yes. Uh, LOL. Yes, this is a, it's a win. That's perfect. That's the way to think about it, Donald. Thank you. So this is going to be victory number one, right? I'm going to put in BG stats. I have one. <laughs> So I'm going to flip this over here. I'll put these goals here. So what we're trying to do, folks, uh, I really want to finish this row and this row. Those are for the advanced wins. So first number is nine. Nine, and it's, um, I don't know what color this is because color blindness, but thankfully uh, they've uh, put shapes here. So I've got to put a number nine anywhere here um, that can take the nine in these space. So obviously I cannot put it um here because that has to be a number five. Um, I can put it here because it could be any number. So, and again, I want them to be descending. Let me just make sure on that. Um, whenever you write a number on your sheet, it must be higher than any number written below it in the same column. Okay. So I have to go down here then, right? Why are these numbers here? What do those mean? Oh, that's how many points I get based on the number of completed row. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Okay. So when I complete a row on the sheet, I immediately unlock a bonus number. The bonus number is on the left side. That's what it is. So when I complete this row, for example, I get a free number five. If I complete this row, I get a free number of my choice. And you write the bonus number as soon as you can to complete the row. Oh, wait, you must, you may write any number of your choice on the space in that color column. You must write the bonus number as soon as you complete the row you completed. Cannot save it for later. Eh, that's that's a bummer. But hey, um, at least we get the bonus. If you're ever unable to write a number, it says here, you cannot. if you cannot write a number on your sheet, um, you announce that. You announce that number and color to all players and place that card in the middle of the table. table. All players may use that card on their sheet following the same rules as before. Interesting. So they actually, in the solo game, it just you just sort of get hosed. But in the multiplayer game, then people get to use your number. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Grant, uh, the two numbers um, up top are bonus scoring. Yes, for the row highlighted. That's correct. Okay. So again, these are, so I'm going to write the number nine. It's got to be in a square. So... Uh, the numbers, I think, do they go up to one? 
the numbers are. I don't know what their the numbers are. How high the numbers go? So there's 100 cards in the game, but I don't think it's one to 100. That wouldn't be, make sense. In the example here, the highest number I see is 22 or 25. So maybe it's 25. Tell you what, let's take a quick peek, folks. Um, some of the discards here. There's a 19, 5, 21. Yeah, I don't think there's anything higher than a 25. There's 21, 24. So I think we're looking at 25, and maybe it's four of each since there's 100. So y'all can help me do the odds if we can, or we can do Han Solo style, never tell me the odds. Um, <laughs> Jimmy, yeah, this is a great point. So I'm always impressed with the subtle ways that game designers make their games accessible and how truly prevalent that is in the design of games. I agree, and I'm a big advocate for um, colorblind uh, players because I have red-green colorblindness. I also have difficulty with blue and purple under certain lighting. So I'm always uh, trying to get publishers or designers to work in you know, vision accessibility, um, ways to make it more visually um, approachable. And by using symbols with colors, that's, to me, the easiest way and one of the best ways for someone like me who has trouble all my gaming buddies know that I have trouble with these colors. And uh, one of my friends that's a designer, uh, Daryl, I don't know if he's still in chat, but he does incorporate that in his design. So, folks, if you design it, um, yes, add those uh, icons there. Uh, four colors. And, yeah, you guys are doing – thanks for doing all the odds, friends. So we got a number nine. Uh, what do you think? Should we put it here? Here? So nine through 25. Like nine's like about a third of the way. Why don't we do like nine, ten – I'll put the nine here, okay? I'm not going to overthink it. I'm not going to AP it out. So that's the first one. Um, it's also one of the ones I want to try to complete. Got an eight. Okay, so there's that. Okay. So eight goes there. Then. Oh, yes. Uh, Omari, thank you for joining us. Omari Akil, folks, he is the designer of Rap Gods. And this is a perfect example. Uh, when we played Rap Gods... There's cards, there's different colors for um, uh, on the numbers. And if I had to, uh, when I looked at it, I really couldn't tell, but literally right there, it will say blue, green, or purple. I mean, that's even, uh, that's a great way to do it. Just, you know, putting, writing the, the actual uh, name of the color there. Like, why not? Even if it's a little smaller, that, that's fine. It totally helps. So thank you, Omari. And thanks for joining us. Um, so the next one is, okay, who shuffled these? Seven, really? Okay. That's a bummer. <laughs> 10? So um, what's the rule? The number has to be higher than the last one I, I placed? This is ridiculous. Who shuffled these? Um, okay, write your number. Whenever you write a number, it must be higher than any number written below it. It must be higher than any number written below it. So if I did this, that's fine, right? Must be higher than... Yeah, because there's nothing below it. So did I screw that up? The 987? Higher numbers to the top. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, time for an eraser, folks. Okay, so that was a good practice round. Uh, <laughs> the higher numbers have to be on top. So I'm going to do this. Let, let's Okay. See, this, that's a bad shuffle. So that's a bad shuffle. We're going to reshuffle these. Now that we know the rules, again, I want to thank you for hanging out as I learn Ripple Rush. Um, we do put the higher numbers there. Jeep Glazer after, oh, interesting. Yeah, it was an instant win. Started cheating, yeah. We're, we're, we're restarting. Being in the flank of me to start my professional career, I was immediately unaware of that cover. Oh, okay. Can't be colorblind being an Air Force aviator. Now is something I turn on. Awesome. Thank you, Jubilees. That, that's, yeah, really cool. Thank you for doing that. And he also says, looking forward to, I, I love Rap Gods. My family, we, we all loved it. Okay, so here we go. Second, second try. So there's an 11. The higher numbers have to go on top. So let's do... Um, so if we did 11 here, that means I have to get a 12 and so forth there. Okay. 
has to be higher than any number written below it. Okay. Oh, wait, that was the wrong one. Duh. Why am I doing two pencils? Okay, 11 goes there. Okay. Uh, did you ripple? <laughs> For tonight, it's a ripple shuffle. Thank you. <laughs> um, Okay, there's the nine for this side here, or for the triangle. Oh, no, that's a six. Aha, look at that. A six for a triangle. So, again, we're going high to, or low to high. So the six, we got, like, I'm going to put the six over here. Okay. Then seven in a box. So that's seven. So I'll put the seven here. Because then if we unlock this, we get a free number 15. Okay, there's an 11. So we can match that 11 here. And we're two away from getting the bonus here. Or getting the three-point bonus plus unlocking a bonus number of our choice. 25. Okay. So since we know that's the top one, 25 goes up there. Wait a second. So whenever you're in, it must be higher. Okay. Uh, number three, there. Number 10. So I'm writing the 10 here because it is higher than the number below it. Okay. Number eight. So I cannot use the eight. The eight is gone. So in a multiplayer game, I would put it here, and then you all could use it in the game. And, um, yeah, so in the, my game, is I'm just hosed. Okay, the one, so I can do that there. So, again, I'm, I'm going to score these points at the end of the game. I'm going to get one, two, three, four, because they're um, all in a row there. Uh, there's, now, see, this is interesting. Is this the nine or a six? Oh, it's a nine, because I can see the shading here. So the nine I cannot use, boo. Another one I can't use. That's two. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Omari is working on Hoop Gods, which looks incredible. Um, Games of Fire, yes. So for the nine, it, the way I, I saw it, Games of Fire, I saw like this. There's some, I don't know if you can tell on the screen here, some shadowing back here on the left and top. So that's how I matched it up. But yeah, they could have easily put in a dot there. Okay, uh, number two, so I cannot use that there. Wow, I didn't think a two was going to show up, so that's a bummer. I don't think he can do anything for a solo. Yeah, it doesn't say anything for a solo, what happens if you cannot use a number. Yeah, uh, Marlon, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking, man. You, you read my mind. So Marlon uh, brings up interesting, it's like Quinto or Quicks, but vertical but with cards and easier scoring too. Yeah, I love Quinto. Uh, that's a great uh, roll and write. And this does remind me of it. Uh, but like Marlon said, it's just you're going vertical instead of horizontal and instead of dice using cards. So this is a nice little uh, twist on Quinto. So there's 22. It's got to be higher than any number below it. So there's a three. I'm going to put the 22 uh, here, okay? Because then I can start working on consecutive numbers, get points that way. I really want to get these here. When you got like, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers left. So eight numbers. Can we fill up six here? Let's see. Twelve box A. Perfect. Not only does it fill this up, but it filled up one of those. Um <laughs> like it already on Amazon LOL. Nice market. <laughs> 23. Ah, really? I Did you really think there would be a 23 out of 20 cards? Wow, that's a bummer. That would have helped a lot. Okay, so that's four numbers I've burned. Uh, this is, okay, there's number seven in the triangle, which I can use. And again, that's going to get me points because they're consecutive, and I'm really close to filling one of these rows. I, man, we need, I want a free number, folks. Uh, okay, there's a number six. Again, I know it. Let's look at the difference. There's the nine. There's the six. Again, there's the shadows. 
there. It's got a six, and of course I can't use it because I've already filled up this stuff. Oh man, I'm playing this. I'm playing poorly. Yeah, I'd say there's a one twenty five a chance. Correct. Hey, twenty four. Wow, all those twenty fours. Look at those high twenties. I could not use, folks. Okay, let's continue, shall we? Twenty one. Hey, I can do that. Wait a second. I'm going to look at these rules. 14, 10, 9. These 15, 14, 10. 6, 8, 9. To, oh, okay. So I'm wondering if I could... No, because they have to be in order. Okay, so I have to put the 21. I could put it here. I need 1, 2, 3. You know what? I'm going to try here. Let's try something crazy. I'm going to try this 21 here. That's going to give me a number... If I can get a triangle here, it's going to give me a number of my choice. And it's a 19. Okay, so I've got a 19 there. Triangle, nope. It's a hexagon for 10 there. Oh, but I did fill up this. So that gives me a number of my choice in a triangle spot. So I'm going to be able to combo this, folks. So I'm going to put, um, let's do, so I get a number of my choice in a triangle. I'll do an 8. So the 8 goes here. That combo's there, so I get a number of my choice in a circle. Um, I'll put an eight. Uh, I'll use an eighteen here, so I can't. I can't duplicate numbers there, right? Maybe I could. I don't know. Could I put another twenty-one here? No, because it doesn't say equal to or greater than. It says uh, greater than. So uh, that's the end of the game, folks. Now let's go to scoring. This one here for each column, player score one point for each number of the longest chain of numbers. So my longest chain here is one, two, three. So I get three points uh, for the triangle. I get three. Uh, then the longest chain, I got one, two there. And I got one, two, three, four here in the circle. Then the hexagon. Is that the hexagon? Is that what it is? Um, that's not a very good hexagon. Uh, that is two. And then the square. Whoops. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, I've gotten one row here, one of the bonuses for three. So here's my score, folks. Uh, I've got uh, 7, 9, 14, 17. So is that 17 for my first game? Now I have somewhere to um, – another score to shoot for. Uh, hopefully I can beat 17 next time. Uh, yeah, I like the combos too. I, I don't know. I, I feel like – so in a four-player game, you're going to remove 20 cards randomly. So you never play with all 100. Uh, so two players use 40, three players use um, 60, and four players use 80. So there's going to be 20 um, taking out of it. But, yeah, I really like it for a quick game like this. Definitely, it's got some it's got some cool little things to it. I, I like it. Um, like Marlon was saying, it is familiar. Uh, it reminds me of Quinto. Um, yes, that's exactly. I was just going to say, Marlon, you should be on the stream with me, man. We're totally reading each other's minds. You have to be. You can be able to use other people's cards. So the stuff that I threw out, maybe Marlon or Amanda or whoever, one of y'all could have used it. So, yeah, there's the score, folks. Seventeen. Uh, Ripple Rush from Stronghold Games. I don't know what the um, price is. It should be out now, right? I think Marlon said it was on Amazon. Um, I think this came out last year or earlier this year. But that's Ripple Rush from Stronghold. I want to thank my friends at Stronghold for sending that over. And I want to thank you all for hanging out. I really appreciate it, um, especially since Lauren um, took off and Michelle wasn't able to join. So thank you for hanging out with me tonight and this weekend, tomorrow, UK Game Expo. I'm playing Herd Mentality with Suzanne Sheldon, actual LOL, John, um, and the folks from Big Potato Games. Please check out UK Game Expo. It's virtually expo. Um, that will be live tomorrow at 8 a.m. Pacific. So it's a little early for me, but hey, it's it's cool. Um, and then I'm going to be doing some unboxings of like Tidal Blades, uh, Friday the 13th, uh, Cities, uh, Skylines, and Sonora. Got a couple other games I'd like to unbox. I'm just going to unbox them, and we'll talk about them. I'll just you know show them on camera, see what you think. Really excited about Tidal Blades. That one straight from the factory. Uh, I don't know when retail's coming out, but it's it's not yet. It uh, maybe October. I think James said. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, unboxing this weekend. I'll probably play a couple of solo games, too. So please come back here. Uh, be uh, Oh, yeah, tomorrow's going to be fun. Thank you, um, Download Done Yet. Yes, thank you all, friends. Um, Amanda, do we have anyone to raid? 
if we have anyone to raid, let me know, please. I want to thank our sponsors again for um, all their support. Um, our Patreon sponsors as well, uh, especially Mike and Jeff for being the very important gamer and the, oh my gosh, uh, the all access um, Patreon supporters. Thank you, uh, friends. And if you want to support my Patreon, please check it out under Ruel Gaviola. Thank you, GB Glazers. Uh, no, no raid or no, none pub. Is that, oh, Noni pub. Yeah, let's, let's raid Noni pub folks. Uh, hang out in uh, chat there. I'll be there in a second. I'm going to shut this part of the broadcast down, but we're going to raid. Okay. So thank you again. Have a great weekend. I'll see, hopefully I'll see some of y'all tomorrow and hopefully Sunday too. So thanks again. Have a great night. Bye everybody.